Welcome back to another weekly GMBN Tech Show. In the show this week, we've got some tyres from Vittoria and some tech from Gore. Uh, some news on a really cool bespoke bike brand. Loads of retro kit. And more great stuff for you lot. So first up, we have some new Vittoria tyres. This is called the Agaro, and I believe, Doddy, you were there relatively recently, a few months back. That's right, yeah, I was at their factory, uh, basically out in Thailand, uh, and I actually saw a prototype of this, although I wasn't allowed to say anything at the time. I saw a little very cheeky sample. Um, pretty interesting looking tyre, I think. It kind of reminds me a little bit of um, kind of a mini in DHF. Yes, totally. But I think the intention of this tyre is not a downhill tyre, it's a trail tyre. Yeah, it's got quite a short stack height, which can yeah. actually be really good to ensure a really nice contact patch. The whole right. tyre is working with the terrain. And interestingly enough, it uses four different rubber compounds. That's right, yeah. That's the, like that's basically uh, Victoria's signature move. Uh, they've got the only factory in the world that can produce currently for mountain bike tyres a four compound system. Yeah. So it's a really advanced tyre carcass. Also, another proprietary bit of tech they use is the graphene. So graphene that's is right. basically you know, a wonder material. I think the guy that discovered it got a Nobel Prize. It's really yeah. up there in the science circles. But it means that they can basically fill out the molecular structure of rubber with this one atom thick structure of graphene yeah. to increase resistance to abrasions and strength and, and durability. So it's some high, high flying tech. By, by all accounts, yeah, it's all singing and all dancing. Uh, that is the only thing they couldn't show us actually. Oh really? That was the one thing I wanted to see was like <laughs> graphene in its raw form and they're like, no, nope, can't see that. But I've heard some amazing things about graphene, about not only its strength and versatility, but it also conducts electricity. Yeah. And all these sort of things. So it's really, really exciting. You see it in many industries, yeah. It's, uh, it's bonkers. I think, but um, back on that tire, interesting, it comes in uh, different carcass sizes, up to a big 2.6, which is quite cool. Mm. In fact, you can see that on this picture here, being used uh, by the looks of it, a Finale Liguri, I think. Um, 27, 29, 2.35, uh, and I said 2.6, so various sizes available. And like you were saying, like that low stack height on it, I think that would make a really good rear tire, and perhaps front and rear in sort of like drier, firm yeah. conditions. And just something interesting about this, and I learned a bit about this when I was at the factory uh, from their guy Ken Avery, who designed this tire, in fact, was their use of sipes on, on all of the knobs, basically. So we know that they're there to basically help it sort of, um, so the knobs can manipulate around sort oh, of okay. obstacles yeah. on the trail. And they're very specifically aimed at basically increasing the rolling resistance, sorry, decreasing the rolling resistance and increasing the grip. Yeah. Uh, you'll notice where, from where they're placed. And something else as well is on many off-road tires with sort of quite aggressive lugs like these, you'll see a ramp on one side. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I'll, I'll use that mini as an example. You can see a clear ramp yeah. on those. Notice on these, it's got a step instead. Yes. So it basically, yeah. to accentuate, basically it gets even more traction and the nobles can deform even more, but without losing any of that rolling speed. Yeah, I think those indentations are really interesting on tyres. Yeah. It almost forms, obviously not, but something similar to a suction cup. Yeah. Because you can go around something on, That's right. on a very, very small level. Moving around stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah it look, looks cool, I think. Big time. Okay, so there's some new digital tech from GoPro. They've got the new Hero 8, and they've also got the Max, which is their 360 cam. Uh, the first one on the screen you can see is the new 8. It doesn't look at a glance that much different to the 7, but it's got quite a few new cool features built into it, including what I really like is the, um, the mounting system. It's actually built onto the camera itself. Oh, so you don't have to fit on one of the uh, sort of, I guess, like the nude cases yeah. as you'd get before. Um, as with the previous models, it has it's fully functioned. It's got a touch screen on the back so you can see what you're doing. Uh, it's, it's absolutely intense what it's got on here. So you've got HyperSmooth 2.0 image stabilization. And by all accounts from the videos that they're showing, it looks absolutely amazing. But something from, I think, from our point of view that's really cool is you can get adaptive kits to go with it. So you can have a shotgun mic, you can have a light, and also a, sort of a selfie screen. So for creators, for other YouTube creators out there, a really useful thing if we're going to trade shows and stuff. Yeah, it does seem, I mean, just flicking through my Instagram account shows that I'm certainly pretty adverse to good quality photos, or at least taking them myself. <laughs> but it does look like for people that want to make their own content, a really good kind of all-in-one kit. I think so, yeah. Really, I, really cool. I think definitely the best they've sort of announced to date. And um, you might have seen recently the Apple, um, the Apple, Apple announced their latest version of the iPhone, and you could switch between different screen modes on it. So yeah. lens equivalents, you can now do that on this. So it's equivalent of a uh, super wide, wide, uh, linear and a bit closer, mm. um, all from the same camera. And something I did see about this new GoPro is that when you press the record button, yeah it will then have taken the footage a bit beforehand. It's almost right, always yeah. on like a loop, similar to like a, a dashboard camera. Yeah, so absolutely. 
you could go, you have a bit of leeway instead of just missing the moment. Yeah. You can actually get it, which is so it seems really good. And of course, for the all important filming status, it would do 4K, uh, I think 30 and 60 frames. But more importantly, if you want to do online stuff at insanely slow frame rate or insanely fast frame rate, it'll do 1080 at 240 frames, which I think is quite nuts for something that small that yeah. works that well. I'm not going to lie, this is all just numbers to me, but it sounds impressive. Dan, Dan the cameraman, is kind of smiling and nodding by the camera, <laughs> so I think, I think that's all right. But wow. They've also got the Max, so that's basically a 360 version. Um, you, you can obviously film it as a normal GoPro, so one side of the camera, but it's got another side, so you can enjoy all the 360-based stuff that you can get as well, so pretty cool tech, I think. So recently, Doddy, you were actually at the Gore factory, oh, yeah. and you were telling me about all the kind of wonders in their laboratories they might be bringing out. Do you know, as far as clothing companies goes, I think they are probably the most tech. Mm. I mean, everyone knows them for the Gore-Tex membrane that they use. Of course, other brands can use it. Um, but Gore-Wear, they make, I, I think, the most technical bike clothing I've, I've yeah. ever seen or even yeah, heard sure. of. Yeah, they've got a new jacket that I think is right up all of our street. So in the top of the range, they have a jacket called the Infinium. It's made from Gore-Tex active fabric, so it's super waterproof and durable. Yes. But their new jacket is the hybrid one. so. It's kind of a two-piece construction. The bottom half of it is made from their windstopper material. Right. Okay. So it's basically a soft shell. Um, it's windproof, as the name suggests, and it's near enough waterproof, although they won't say that. But I can say from having ridden in windstopper garments for years, it keeps off all but the worst yes. yeah. of rain. Uh, but more importantly, it's really stretchy and comfortable. Yeah. And then the chest, the shoulders, the arms, uh, and the top of the hood, basically, um, and the small of the back where you get tire spray, are made from the Gore-Tex Active so waterproof material. It's waterproof where you need it, and yeah. the breathability enhanced. Uh, unbelievably so, yeah. That fabric is phenomenal, so I'm really keen to see what that would be like in a trail situation, because that's what they've designed it for, where you're, you're riding head-on into you know wet bushes, all the mm. stuff that really makes your jersey soaked, and that, of course, makes you cold. I imagine using that windstopper fabric as well, it enables it to be slightly more, would it be fair to say contoured? Yeah, compared definitely. to just a standard waterproof. Oh, absolutely, yeah. So I guess you would say one of the downsides of a waterproof jacket is it could be a bit crispy and mm. noisy and stuff. And obviously the fit's never going to be, will be constrictive if you wore them really tight. Yeah. So something like this Infinium hybrid jacket is designed to be fitted much more like a cycling garment than oh, a cool, yes. waterproof jacket. Yeah. So I think that's going to be a hot tip for Big some time. tech clothing, although it's going to be quite expensive because it comes from Gore Wear. Yeah. So we've also seen a new bike this week from Arbor, which I believe is pronounced like Harbor, but in Whitby. So <laughs> it's a long Travel 29. It is the production ready version of the bike that we saw at Bespoke That's right, Bike yeah. Fair and Festival. Mm. So a really cool looking bike. It's certainly a refinement of their previous versions. Mm. And I mean, it's a spectacularly striking bike. It, has it does to look good, doesn't it? It does, that mm. deep purple, really quite. Quite fantastic looking. The numbers, obviously, super progressive, yada, yada, yada. But one thing I think looks really cool from people that want to ride a hard, aggressive bike, it's it's, it's chain stays at almost 450. Oh, now look, this, I love back this, might be, <laughs> this might be a bit too much for me to wrestle yeah. in the turns, but for, you love that style of bike, don't yeah, you? Yeah, 100%, longer the better. Within reason, of course. Yeah. 450 is, is a good length back end. I'd be really interested right. to see the leverage curves on it because it seems like quite a big lever. Obviously, yeah. the compression changes suit and often, when you've got that large amount of leverage and you have a correctly tuned shock, it means the amount of force pressing the tire into the ground can give rather outstanding amounts of grip. Yeah, and obviously the combination just to that longer back end anyway, yeah. just really wants to cut a turn. Yeah, and they've even managed to smuggle a bottle cage in there. Oh, It looks really, so really good. Definitely Enjoy made your shortlist then for 2019. Yeah, that, and that's like hyperbike territory. It's yeah. really, really cool. It is, good work guys. Okay, next up in news, um, I hope you forgive me for this, it's an e-bike, um, but hear me out because we're not really going down the e-bike route. Uh, it's the new GT Force Amp, um, and it's part of their GTE range. Uh, but what I wanted to talk about was Louis, actually, the guy that designed the bike. So he's also responsible for their, their downhill bike that came earlier in the year with a high pivot and an idler wheel. That's good. And the back end on that thing works unbelievably well. It really does stick to the ground, which of course, that's what you want at high speed. Now, it's really interesting to just looking at some of the things that Louis said. So here's the bike on screen at the moment. So what you need to know is got the LTS suspension design out back, it's 150 mil travel, front and rear, 29 inch wheels. And if you want to know about the E stuff, it's Shimano Steps, it's got the 504 watt hour battery in the down tube, but what we want to talk about is the suspension. So something quite cool about it, I think me and Henry were talking about before is when bike manufacturers are really approaching suspension in a different way. In this case, it's designed really to 
really handle what e-bike riders are going to be doing. So if you just take the e out of it, just think of <laughs> Monday downhillers. <laughs> But it's just like walking it down trying to get it it's under It's a the... shuttle bike, basically, yeah. isn't it? So you ride at the top of a hill and smash it down hills and have fun on it. And he's actually said, you ride an e-bike differently. Um, for example, instead of bunny hopping over an obstacle, you really have to weight the bike first. Um, increasing the leverage on this allows for this type of riding, uh, which is kind of unique to e-bikes. I'm not sure about the unique to e-bike, but I 100% get it. Like the first e-bike I rode just felt really lethargic and far too linear and just yeah, totally. like a bag of horrible stuff to be honest I but think when e-bikes first came out the the only concern was getting up the hill yeah now they're coming down and I actually had my first ever go on an off-road e-bike the other day I didn't know you did this yeah it changed you, I, he's, to be honest, he's changed to be honest with you I've got a different set of perceptions which means I'm not keen on e-bikes but for different reasons than I thought I was gonna be okay All right. but what we'll pick this up later I yeah. was amazed at is the added weight means the bike we talked about this before about the suspension units being pushed into their stroke as oh, opposed yeah. to rising the whole bike yeah and for what was an incredibly heavy bike the amount of grip made it feel so nimble oh yeah and that's what i was we, amazed at what was it you rode out of interest i believe it's a swerks i think it's a e-bike specific oh okay you said one of the emvn boys bikes yeah oh, i think cool. it had like a bosch motor like the big mo big washing machine players my mom loves her <laughs> bosch um so similar technology it's yeah. a daily rinse and it was fantastic <laughs> No, I think it'd be really, really cool. And I think something that I've certainly earmarked for the future yeah. is we, we should str get a normal bike, let's strap some lead to it, take it up to e-bike weight and, so and see forms. what happens. I oh, know, man, he's done that a few times. Mm. Chris Porter. Chris Porter, he loves it. He's done it a lot, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but it's absolutely true. Uh, suspension kinematics mean more now than I think they ever have. Now that mm. the fact that the riding we're doing has changed and the rest of the bike has kind of caught up to. Now the forks and shocks are really are that good. And I think the industry's changed somewhat. It used to be kind of like old pirate maps and, you know, trickle down secrets <laughs> to try and get, you know, graphs and leverage and kinematics. Yeah. But now they seem to publish them when they release the bike. Yeah. There's almost a bit of a thirst for it and a better understanding from the consumers. So, you know, hats off for you guys for demanding it. Yeah, and just a quick one on screen, a few more shots of this GT we've just been talking about uh, and some of those maps and graphs. Okay, now some news on those physique shoe winners. Yes, if you are indeed a winner to that lovely giveaway, your names are appearing on screen now. So check your emails, because we're getting in touch. Congratulations, guys. Congratulations, nice one. Now it is time for bike caves. This is where we get to show off the places where you work on your bike, where you store your bike, <laughs> and all that business. So if you're sitting at home and you think that you've got a good bike cave and you wanna get it featured, click on the uploader link below and hopefully we can show it off on the show. So without much further ado, shall we get into it? 100%. All right, so first up from Ashley in Suffolk. This is Garage Bike Workshop. I work in a bike shop, so do most maintenance there, uh, but it's nice to have a little space at home to do that. Um, your space at home seems better than some bike shops I've yeah, seen to be fair. really nice eh? Looking great, yeah, nice little roll cab and a little Halfords Pro 1 tucked under your, it looks like old kitchen worktops. Yeah, I like um, that just simple kind of box box section to put the wheel in. That's really tidy, yeah, that's a great shout. Yeah. so easy. Could do with a few of those outside here. Yeah, totally, and something like that would be really useful for working on dropper seat posts. Definitely, can, yeah. Because I sometimes like, you know, strap it to the stand or something, but that would be actually really, really useful. Just enough, yeah. A uh, nice park tool sign as well. It's quite a, quite an old school one. I've not seen one of those actually. Looking good. And then on the back, you've got your Allen keys. On the wall, you've got your TV up there. It's looking very clean. Nice little vice. And then lots of WD-40 motorcycle protector. Yeah, definitely into his motorbikes looking at the top here. In fact, I'd say that top left picture is probably you um, looking at that, judging by the fact it's taking on the roads. Keeping within the national speed limit. Yeah, he, he, <laughs> look, he looks like he's doing about 29 miles an hour there, <laughs> I reckon. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, there's your bike. There we go. Very nice. Nice one. Nice setup. All right, next up's from Jake uh, up in Wirral. Uh, shed was rebuilt to house both the 20-year-old Beast of the East. Oh, nice old Cannondale. Yes. And my rescued from a box of bits, Cannondale Jackal 2. Took me a year to put him back together here. Uh, original brakes, shocks, loads of hope and carbon. Well worth it. Um, your shows have been a great help. It's really appreciated. Um, hope you like my cannon shed. That's pretty cool. Awesome, you've got a trail dog. That's oh, pretty cool. Funny Blake was here now. He'd give you a super <laughs> nice even though it'd be on the wrong show. <laughs> and so they Fisker tools on the wall, they look pretty good. If not Fisker, they're definitely a better brand, for sure. Um Canada looks good actually as yeah, well. Yeah, it's actually been properly restored that, eh? Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, look at that! Nice! Massive Canada. Yeah. 
And there's LBCD. So love yeah. Cannondale decals everywhere. Yeah, as well. Super cool. It is a quite an iconic font. A lot of people, I think, buy Cannondale and they stick with Cannondale. Yeah, so they have a really loyal following. I quite like that. A bit of a tribe thing. I think um, yeah. Cannondale and Yeti have that same thing as well. Yeah. There's not many brands that have that. Yeah, you're right. Definitely. I think, I think it maybe comes to the territory of being not afraid to do things differently. I That's think right. people really respect and connect with that. Yeah. And uh, nice to see you locking all your stuff up as well. Always good to see you locked to yeah. sort of wall anchors, keeping your belongings nice and safe. Whoa, Whoa. look at this one. Yes. Wow, so this one's from Josh in Queensland, Australia. That's like a bike museum. That is pretty that cool. That is insane. Over, well, 25 bikes here. Unbelievable. Wow. A complete bike nut, yeah. You're not joking, are you? Look at that. Um, what, what even is that? What even is going on there? <laughs> Some sort of beach cruiser stretch limo of a bike. Wow. Rad. I'll tell you what, John Canning's over on GCN Tech would wet himself if he saw some of these bikes. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have to show him because he will love these. God, you know, you were talking about bottom bracket heights earlier. What do you reckon that was? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it's probably, what, just below the wheel axles? <laughs> Imagine lacing those, those wheels up. Yeah. I don't even know how many spokes they've got. Radial, <laughs> I guess, so easier. But nice setup. Awesome. Yeah, really Great cool. selection this week, guys. Um, please continue to keep your uh, bike caves coming into us. Uh, Use your address, as Henry said at the beginning. Okay, now it's time for Rewind. This is where we go back in time and look at all the old mountain bike stuff. Um, this week's a little bit different, so um, continue sending your entries into us uh, right at the bottom of the screen there. Hashtag Rewind, all that stuff. This week, though, I just want to talk about something a bit strange. I couldn't think what it was the other day, but when you were talking about that Fox 38... Oh, yeah, the Richie Roos bikes Rude, and EWS. I was thinking, like... I've seen a fork that's kind of like that before, and then I got it, had a little rummage, and I found my old Rockshox Totem I from, I, I think, about 2007, I think. And it's funny, because when this came out, this was so ahead of the grain, right? So a single crown fork, 40 mm mil -hmm. stanchions on it, 180 mil travel, coil sprung, yeah. oil damped, and it's even got little lubing ports at the bottom of the leg there, so you can unscrew these, and it came with a syringe, to put lower leg lube straight in to keep them yeah. feeling good. Um, all right, so it does weigh about two pounds heavier than the Fox 36 with the same travel. Mm -hmm. It's kind of not a million miles it apart, though. It isn't a million miles away. And, and you know, it was almost kind of... Well, it's interesting, Abe. I think, you know, I don't want to bring it back with the e-bikes again, but I think that the 38 is essentially an e-bike fork. I, yeah, I think you're right. Of twist and conform for those ultra high-end racers yeah. that want to run a 180mm fork on a 29. But largely, I think, you know, for your average Joe, myself included, a 36 is more than oh god to, to be fair a 34 even these days is good enough for yeah, most riders it's true the 36 is a hell of a fork but this was born of an era where free ride and single crown forks people wanting to ride rampage yeah or in the case of somebody like fabian burrell was wanting to race world cups on a single crown yeah just for either weightness or trickability and something like this was indeed a blast from the past not just the diameter of the fork legs but a non-tapered 1.5 steerer. That's right, yeah. So take a look at that. As Henry said, a complete 1.5 steerer. What we have now is 1.5 and it tapers to inch and an eighth. And basically they got to that because you didn't need the rigidity at the top. Basically it's all about the strength around the crown. So that's why we still have big crowns like this, but we've lost a bit of weight on the top. It's made the stems a bit smaller as well. So it has progressed a lot since these days, but actually when RockShox brought this out, I think it was a bit of a, it was a really cool thing actually, you know, having guys at uh, Rampage and stuff to bar spins on a single crown fork. Yeah. It really kind of changed the way that some of the sport went. But, you know, it's funny, coil sprung, long travel single crown forks. Mm. It's almost done a full circle, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's you know, crazy. <laughs> like people are always asking that question again. I recently put a coil on my bike and, you know, it's, it's really just interesting how it all goes in one big loop. Yeah, and um, I think I've still got... I mean, the frame's cracked, but I've still got it, and I've still got some of the components that the this was on an old Intense Socom. Oh, if yeah. I have, I'll kind of loosely string it together, and we'll bring it in. We'll just have a look at how far tech has come from... This was in 2007, so it's not even that long ago. Mm -hmm. um, but it's pretty cool. Just thought I should show you yeah, that no, stuff. Yeah, super cool. Um, and also, when we were talking about the new GoPro stuff earlier, at the same time I was having a rummage, having a bit of a clear-up, I found a little, a little box in my workshop with... Uh, the first of the, the heroes with the wide angle lens. Why does this look like something manufactured by the Rebel Alliance? It's crazy, isn't it? It's even <laughs> it's got crazy. the same colour. <laughs> yeah. So this, this one, I had a hop-up kit on it, so it actually had a bolt-on screen nice. on the back there. 
Um, I think the battery life is about 20 minutes. And yeah. the, the, I don't even know what... I think it was a re- the first of the HD yeah. Heroes, but it wasn't really HD when you looked at it. I think it was 720, mm-hmm. something like that, HD ready. Uh, and then there's the 2, and then, of course, the 3 that looks a little bit more familiar, yeah. taking the shape of the modern ones. I think I had the 2, I think. Maybe even... I it was one of these generations. Still had a full-size SD slot in there rather yeah. than the micro. But, um, but it's nuts how fast that company has taken us to... The sort of tech that gets you, I guess uh, the tech heads would say like prosumer quality stuff. Uh, you look at drones. Back in the day, the New World Disorder films, the sort of stuff people were riding on Rockshox totems. Mm-hmm. In fact, that was all filmed with helicopters. Yeah. Now you and your mates can go and do it with a drone that you can go and buy down the shops. Yeah, I think tech's the best it's ever been. And I think it's quite easy to discount it and say it's really expensive. But actually, for what you're getting and what you can do with it, I think it's better than it's ever been. And um, some of the safety-based tech as well, like the Garmin stuff with the alarm light, mm-hmm. sending alerts to um, next of kin and stuff. Yeah. I, I think it's fantastic and it's really, really cool. So now let's look at some top mods. This is where we get to see the work you do on your bikes, the little modifications you made, perhaps the big modifications you made. As always, get on the uploader link below to submit yours. And first off, we have a very, very, very decked out specialized demo, Choi Lee Designs model from Michael. And I mean, to look at it, it is pretty, well, it's something. That's, that's a super bike, straight out. That's yeah. a dream build of a bike, isn't it? Big time. And also just reading his description, you might look at a bike like this and think it was from some young buck. Yeah. But actually it's from more of an elder statesman of the downhill society. No way, yeah. Yeah, I noticed that in turning 60 in January, owning a downhill bike. I hope I'm still riding downhill wow. at that time. And it looks amazing. I mean, congratulations in advance. Um, so cool that you're shredding and a, <laughs> your bike is that's off the charts, isn't it? Um, and, and your toolbox behind it, actually. Snap on <laughs> Yeah. Straight to the top, why don't you, with your, your tools and your bike. Wow, yeah. So Fox 40 up front, obviously. Has to be one of those, 2018 one. Custom Olin's TTX shock on there. Industry 9 wheels. Uh, SRAM code brakes on there, Hope 165mm cranks, MRP chain guide, specialised grips, Ergon, downhill seat, specialised tyres, um, Thompson direct mount uh, stem on there. Man, look at the things dripping with the, the best stuff. Yeah. Wow. Super cool. Really, really tidy looking. I also like those Galfa rotors which are blacked out in the middle. Oh yeah, that's a good a spot. Little, that's just a nice little touch. Wow, thanks for sending that one in Michael. Uh, love your work. Really cool. Uh, well, that's definitely out of reach for uh, a lot of people. That is <laughs> yeah. hell of a bike, but we save up for something. I guess anyone could have one of these. All right, next one up. Um, you have to forgive us here because this is this is a large gallery of pictures. Um, thank you for taking these pictures, uh, Z. I hope I pronounced your name right. Uh, Z Pilot. I got the nickname because I'm the only one in my group of friends who's actually an airline pilot. Um, that being said, I've got two major passions in life: flying planes and riding mountain bikes. Oh, that's good mix. Two of the coolest things you could possibly do, <laughs> yeah. I think. Um, first thing I did is getting many accent colours to be as blue as possible. Blue is for blue skies, as I say in skydiving. Uh, second thing I did was get some custom clamps for my grips. So it looked like navigation lights. So uh, navigation lights are the red and green lights on the wingtips to help other pilots know which side of the plane they're looking at. Uh, I like this. Oh, I can see where it's cool, going nice with this. Bit of detail. Yeah. Um, the most recent thing I did was completed two days ago. I bought a $14 mudguard and painted it to look like a runway. I chose to use, oh, what does this mean? I chose to use runway 37 because it's an impossible runway. It's an impossible runway. It says, uh, if you want to know why 37 is impossible, do your own bloody research. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I've already nice. typed enough. Yeah. Either way, we like it. It looks great. Um, very colour coordinated bike. I've just also noticed your all mountain style protection on the top oh, tube. Cool. There. Quite subtle, you don't see that from the side. New proof stem as well. Yeah, nice. tidy. Whole bike looks great. Thanks for sending that in. Awesome. Now, this is a bit of a throw out to you guys, really. We're thinking about doing more stuff to do with wheels. So what kind of yeah. stuff do you want to see? What kind of questions do you have? We could perhaps do an ask special if enough of you get in the comments. Now, before everyone says, do a wheel build, do a wheel build, do a wheel build, we will do that in time. Um, but just actually limitations in terms of duration and making something that you guys actually want to watch is more important to us of course, than just yeah, putting yeah. up a wheel build for the sake yeah. of it. So get your questions in, anything from 
spoke length, measuring them, cutting them to size, different types of rim, different types of hub, engagement, anything you want to know, get in the comments and hopefully we can make some tailor-made content. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, as Henry said, let us know down there. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this week's show. Um, I'm going to throw you straight away to that video from the Victoria factory, from tree to trail, right down there. Well, that was really, really good. And I'm going to throw you to what not to do when cutting your headset, which came out on just at the weekend. So click down there for that one. Uh, as always, don't forget to give us a huge thumbs up here at GMBN Tech. And hit that notification bell. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next time. Ding, ding.